Welcome back to the best YouTube channel out there. We've got everything. We've got running, digestive athletics, the beer mile, interviewing pro runners, you name it, we got it. Today, after spending a summer in Colorado training in the mountains, sending it every day out there, ultimately racing the Pikes Peak Marathon, we thought it would be a little selfish of us to not share some of that knowledge with you all. We've tried a bunch of shoes out over the course of this summer, and we have a pretty good sense of what is good out there and what is crap. So we today are gonna to reveal the best mountain running shoe of 2021 with a good old stamp of approval from the Beer Mile Boys. Our boys at the Beer Mile Podcast. Yeah. Let's get into the video. All right, so most people probably know us as the Beer Mile podcast guys, interviewing pro runners on this channel, setting records in the Beer Mile, doing stupid challenges, trail running, mountain running, etc. We don't do a lot of shoe reviews, but you know what? We're also some shoe nerds as well, and we got the deets on the best mountain and trail running shoes out on the market right now. We've got a number of shoes that you see in front of me here. I also tried a bunch of others this summer that I ended up wearing out, throwing away, don't have with me, but Gonna talk through these really quick here and then ultimately reveal the big ding 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 winner, the best trail running shoe that's out right now. So if you were following along this summer, I was training for the Pikes Peak Marathon, put out a Pikes Peak Marathon training series if you wanna check that out and see some gorgeous views. In those videos, I wore all the shoes that you see in front of me here, tried them out on a number of different terrains. Climbing 14ers, hiking 14ers, running all sorts of different, you know, dirt, rock, mud, uh, super steep stuff, more gradual stuff, flat stuff, pretty much everything. These shoes have definitely been put through the ringer. And so I know about durability. I know about what works on different uh, types of terrain, different grades, all that good stuff. So what do we have here in front of us? We got the Nike, oh, excuse my burp there. This athletic brewing going down easy. We got the Nike Trail Terra Kiger shoe from Nike. I just said Nike twice. We've got the Nike Peg Trail. Uh, this is actually a fresh pair. I had a different pair that I wore out, but these bad boys are looking pretty snazzy. We got the Hoka Evo Speed Goats. We got the Hoka Speed Goat 4s. And we got the Ultra Temp 2s here. So let's see, where to dive in? Let's just, let's just go in that order that I just went here. The quick and dirty version of a trail shoe review here. So the Nike Terra Kiger 4s, I don't know, they look pretty cool. They do the job, but yeah, you know, Honestly, not my favorite. A little clunky, I'd say. You know, kind of heavier than they need to be for the level of cushion that they have and the level of protection that they have. I mean, they're they're solid. You know, I think I put three or four hundred miles on these bad boys, and they still got a little bit of uh, life left on the lugs here. But I don't know. I had some issues with my Achilles kind of slipping a little bit. Achilles would get sore when I wore these for like 15 to 20 miles at a time. So. You know, I, well, I guess I probably just revealed that they're not the winner, so I, maybe I should uh, be a little more objective in my tone, but these guys, you know, they're, they're solid shoes. They're probably, I think, the cheapest shoe up here, though. So if you're looking for that, just looking for a solid shoe and you're not trying to do anything super long, maybe you're just going for like five to 10 mile runs or hikes in them, they're a solid shoe, nothing wrong with them, but uh, you know, I think there's better out there. Nike Peg trail shoes, a little bit more performance based, I'd say, than the Terra Kigers. They're a little bit lighter. Um, lugs, amazing, still good grip. Uh, again, they're not probably for the most technical stuff out there, but a good mix of being able to handle a variety of terrains as well as uh, performance. You know, I'd never race in them. They're, they're too heavy for that, but uh, really solid training shoe. You can get a lot of miles on these things too. I, I've gotten five, 600 miles on these and no issues, uh, you know, injury wise. They, they eventually wear out of course, but Pretty solid shoe overall. Um, they look pretty cool. I mean, Nike always delivering on the design. Can't argue with that. The Hoka Evo Speed Goats took these bad boys on a couple of FKT attempts. Uh, some of the faster stuff I did and some of the longer stuff I did too. I guess a balance of everything. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, maybe not say too much about these quite yet, wink wink. Uh, the next ones here, the Hoka Speed Goat 4s. Man, wore these bad boys a lot. Uh, kind of all around, I did a, a beer mile at 14,000 feet in these shoes, ran the four pass loop, uh, which is a 27 mile loop around the Maroon Bells Wilderness area in these shoes, super famous run. Also climbed some of the class three, class four 14ers in these guys, the more technical rock climbing stuff, and they had plenty of grip, great for that as well. So overall, very pleasantly surprised in these shoes about the grip on the bottom, 
uh, the cushion, just how good they feel even when you're wearing them for seven, eight, nine hours uh, when you're out on an adventure during the day. And these things have summited a hell of a lot of 14ers. Summited 32 of the 58 Colorado 14ers this summer. And I think these guys were maybe at the top of about 15 or 20 of them. So always hold a, a dear place in my heart. Lastly here, we got the Ultra Tim 2s. Again, made it to the summit of a lot of 14ers. I didn't run in these quite as much as some of the others like the Nikes and the Speed Goats, but I hiked a hell of a lot in them. The reason I love these is the zero millimeter heel to toe drop. Feels very natural. I like to feel the ground when I'm going over those rocks, when I'm rock climbing. And also the forefoot being wider, more of a natural foot shape really works well for me. Overall, I love these. The big problem with these guys, and and I know the Temp 3s are out now, so the Temp 2s, you know, maybe maybe this has been corrected in the Temp 3s. They have catastrophic failures very easily. I'll show a picture on the screen right now or behind me. The side of these shoes tends to wear out very easily and blow out. I'm on my, I think I'm on my third pair of these, and everything else could last a lot longer, but the mesh, just for whatever reason on the side here, just completely rips out uh, when you're doing all the side to side movement and climbing over rocks and your foot shifting around within the shoe. For whatever reason, it just tears the crap out of the side of them. So if you're worried about durability and your shoes lasting as long as possible, probably not the best choice. Although again, they're they're on the cheaper side compared to a lot of shoes. And I think actually the Temp 2s you can get on Running Warehouse and a lot of sites right now for like 60 bucks. So. At that price, it doesn't matter. You can buy like three pairs of them for the same price as one of these other ones. But something to look out for is that this does break down pretty easily. I still got like three or 400 miles on them, but just want to call that out as that was one of the main things that I found to be an issue as well as the lugs wear down very quickly and get to the point where you're slipping and sliding all over the place and you just can't use them anymore. Last thing I'll say about the Tim 2s. Well, actually, it's not what I'll say about the Tim 2s. It's what Justin Grunewald will say about the Tim 2s. He's an ultra athlete. We talked a little bit about it when he was on the episode of the Beer Mile podcast when I met up with him in Silverton, Colorado. He talks a little bit about the Tim 2 versus the Tim 3 and why he prefers the Tim 2 over the Tim 3. So if you wanna check that out, link to that video in the description or in the card or however YouTube works. All right, so I'm sure you're saying to yourself right now, you're yelling at the screen in front of you, Chris, shut up, get to the point, get to the winner of the 2021 best mountain running shoe. And so here it is, drum roll please. Uh. If you couldn't tell by my tone as I was talking about them already, it's gonna be these bad boys here, the Hoka Evo Speed Goats, my favorite mountain running shoe that's out there right now. And if you're a shoe buff, and you know trail running shoes, now you're gonna say, oh, but these shoes aren't new. They're not out in 2021. They've been out since 2019, and that is true, but they have not made a version two yet. These are still out, and it's not just me that thinks they're awesome. Jim Walmsley wore them for Western States the last couple of years, including his win in 2019, a lot of other Hoka athletes. This is their preferred shoe of choice when it comes to racing. And I think that's for a number of reasons. Let's dive into those right now. So first thing here, the weight. Of all these shoes that you see up here, the Evo Speed Goat is actually the lightest. It's about two ounces lighter than the Speed Goat 4. I think it's about eight and a half ounces depending on the size for the Evo and like 10 and a half ounces for the Speed Goat 4. And all these other ones heavier as well. Trail shoes, mountain running shoes in general tend to be on the heavier side because you have rock plates, you have protection from the ground, you have the lugs, all of that stuff takes weight, but these, a little bit on the lighter side. Hoka did a great job with that. While still packing hella cushion, mega tread with that lightweight, which is a very difficult balance to have. Now these definitely aren't the lightest trail running shoes out on the market. There's tons of lighter options. And depending on what your race distance is uh, and the terrain, maybe this wouldn't be the best bet for you. If, especially if it's a shorter mountain race, you would want something much, much lighter than this. But just talking in terms of the best overall uh, shoe, where you could just, here's one shoe that you can go to the store and buy, and it's gonna work for 99% of the things that you want it to do, this is your guy. The extra cushioning allows you to go on all day excursions with it, whether you're going for a super long run, whether it's a 100 mile race, a 50K race, uh, you're just hiking all day, you're doing a run hike and you're on your feet all day. It's a perfect mix of lightweight for performance 
while still having tons of cushion. And I, I wore these things for up to 12 hours at a time. No issues with blisters, hot spots, discomfort, anything like that. Taking a closer look at the bottom here, we've got the Vibram Mega Grip 5mm lugs on the bottom. And again, I've worn these a bunch, and hopefully you can tell in the video. The lugs are still super strong, uh, plenty of length to them yet, so no concerns about slippage or anything like that. And the Mega Grip material, actually the wetter it gets, the more grippy it gets. It's an amazing material. Shout out to the material science engineers that developed it. I was able to use these on dirt, mud, uh, loose rocks, boulders, uh, rock climbing. Uh, I, they're even great just running on the road. If you run on concrete with them, you really won't notice anything weird. Uh, it still feels pretty normal, to be honest. So great all-terrain shoe. Switching over to the upper, a couple big pros about this. So number one, you've got a hydrophobic upper, which means that the water doesn't hold in the material. And so that was super, super handy, uh, especially in the beer stat FKT attempt I had this summer. I had to run through a uh, creek, so it's relatively water resistant. Now the water gets through the shoe and gets to your feet, but the material itself doesn't hold water, so it's not gonna hold extra weight on the shoe material. Um, it's also a breathable mesh. I can see uh, light through it, uh, definitely plenty of mesh there. So it keeps you cool on the, the hotter runs, good for performance. And also I'm a couple hundred miles into these. I don't remember the exact number, but no signs of tearing anywhere around here. Uh, no points of friction when you bend your foot. No pinch points anywhere for me. Again, everyone's foot is different though. You Maybe you got some big Bertha feet or some little narrow sausages. Everyone's foot is different. Overall though, every review that I've seen and everyone that I've talked to says this thing just fits like a glove. Feels super comfortable, no irritation, no hot spots, no friction anywhere, just feels good overall. So to sum up all that crap I just threw at you, the main pros of this shoe right here, relatively lightweight, especially compared to other trail and mountain running shoes, uh, without compromising cushion. So plenty of cushion, you could run your 100 mile race in this 50 mile race, marathon uh, race, which I did. I wore these for the Pikes Peak Marathon. Uh, so it's perfect for whatever distance, whatever hike, adventure run you wanna do. The grip on the bottom, another huge pro. The lugs don't wear out very quickly, as well as the Vibram Mega Grip material has some of the best traction out there. Oh, and I don't think I said this yet. So the heel to toe drop is four millimeters as well, which is another big pro for me. No shoe is perfect though, so let's talk about the cons for this shoe. So the main one, really the, the only one that I personally can think of for myself is how thick the cushion is. So if you're listening carefully, that was also a pro, was how thick the cushion is. The reason it's a pro, again to reiterate, when you're sending it down a mountain and you're going BTTW, as uh, we used to like to say in college, balls to the wall, or when you're on your feet for 10 hours straight, hiking, running, doing whatever you're doing, it's nice to have that extra cushion to absorb a lot of that impact for you. I noticed that especially running downhill on the Pikes Peak Marathon, these things absorbed a lot of that energy for me. And I can't imagine having a lot thinner shoe, a lot firmer of a shoe, and how badly my legs would have been beat up after something like that. So these, a lot of cushion is a good thing, but it's a bad thing as well, because that means that you're gonna be farther off the ground and you're gonna just inherently feel the rock or whatever the terrain is underneath you a little bit less. And there could be issues with the cushion absorbing too much energy and so your energy return on each toe off, each landing and then toe off, you might lose some energy in there. So that's why I said earlier in the video that if you are doing a shorter race, probably half marathon or shorter, you might not wanna consider these. You might want to consider something a little more responsive, a little lighter, because for those situations, you are more worried about going even faster and speed is a big thing. So you need that energy return. But for those longer races where you're on your feet a long time, the extra cushion I think is just a huge net pro because you're going to save your legs and then you're gonna feel 30 miles, 40 miles, 50 miles in, you're gonna feel that much better as a result. Your legs aren't gonna be all beat up and even if you did lose a little bit of energy return throughout on your actual just toe off your performance, that absorption that the cushion is doing for you is going to save your legs and allow you to still keep trudging along versus your joints and muscles just being completely pooped when you're in the later stages of a run or hike or whatever it is you're doing. 
So that's the main con I can think of for the Hoka Evo Speed Goats. Again, mostly pros, and that's why it is my 2021 best mountain running shoe. And I've tried a bunch, more than you can see pictured here. And this thing, for sure, is my go-to whenever I'm trying to perform well. And even when I'm just going for an easy run, they're super nice to be able to absorb that cushion, uh, have plenty of grip, have a nice uh, form-fitting upper that doesn't have any friction points, you name it. It's a great all-around shoe. I highly recommend it for any trailer mountain runners out there to add to your arsenal. If not your only shoe of choice, maybe it's added to your rotation of shoes. One little pro tip that I have for you, and this is just what I did this summer. If the little bit higher price tag on the Evo is a deterrent for you, or if you just wanna keep them a little bit fresher for your race and not wear them all the time, uh, what I did was wear the Evos for the faster efforts, the harder days, as well as then for the race, but not wear them every day and instead wear the Speed Goat 4s for the bulk of the training, just the easy miles, the, the big hiking, all that sort of stuff because the fit of the two is roughly the same. There are, there are some differences and there are some other videos on YouTube that go into the very specific differences between the two of these that besides just the weight piece of it, but overall, they are pretty similar. Similar enough that if you like one, I think you're gonna like the other and you can just wear the Speed Goat 4s for the bulk of your mileage, bulk of your training, etc. Um, the extra two ounces is not gonna really make a difference when you're just going out for easy miles. Um, but then that way, these are a little bit cheaper than the Evos. You can wear these for more of the miles, keep your Evos looking fresh, um, keep all the lugs fresh, all of that sort of stuff so that you can use them on the races and the big days, uh, just like you wouldn't wear your next percent, your uh, whatever else Nike has out right now, the Vapor Flies, your Add a Zero Pros, you wouldn't use those every single day. So similarly, you know, maybe not use the Evos every single day unless you're made of money. And instead, you can use the Hoka Speed Goat 4s. And I felt like the transition from one to the other, basically seamless, feel pretty much the same. I, I do like, for whatever reason, without going into all the specific scientific details, I do like the way that the Evo feels and fits better uh, for whatever reason than the Speed Goat 4. But similar enough that can rock most of the miles in the Speed Goat 4 and including a beer mile 14,000 feet. I mean, come on, it's pretty, pretty hype. But that's my pro tip of the day. If you're trying to save some coin and you wanna save these for your peak performance, get a combo of the two and switch between them. All right, that's all the knowledge I've got for today. Comment below if you agree or disagree with my decision here. Have you tried a mountain running shoe that's better than the Evo Speed Goats. What's been your go-to lately? Let me know, comment below. I'm always willing to try other shoes. Of course, you know, disclaimer, I didn't try every single mountain or trail running shoe out there. I'm not Mr. Moneybags. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies, so I don't get the shoes for free. I have to actually buy them, and so this is my unbiased opinion, but I would love to try other shoes if I'm missing something. Uh, and again, I tried more than what was up here, but let me know, comment below if you like a different shoe that I didn't talk about, or if you do like one of these and you wanna you know, make me feel good and, and build my ego up a little bit by saying that I chose properly. Uh, really appreciate that. Don't hesitate to like and subscribe. Really appreciate y'all's support and cheers to all of you. Stay true, drink a brew.